When I burned out of college in spring of 2006, I found myself needing cash in the worst kind of way. I was flipping through the newspaper when I found an ad that read, Sweeper Vac Driver Needed. Third shift only, and gave subsequent contact info. I'm really great doing overnight work and decided that I'd give it a shot. I arrive at the office, fill out an application, and before I walked out of the door I was given the job and told to report for training the following evening. So, I reported to the office the following evening. And had the weirdest craziest funniest eight months of my life. I was hoping to share a story or two with you guys. If you like them, I've got tons. Training day, trying to make a good first impression, I showed up at 7.30, 15 minutes ahead of schedule. I found a note taped to the door that told me to have a seat in the break room and that my trainer would be with me shortly. Well, 7.30 eventually turned into 8.45 when I had decided to say fuck it and walk out. As I was heading for the door, a very unkempt man wearing jeans and a dirty t-shirt stumbled in. Hey. Uh. You bruiser? Yeah, I've been here since cool. All right, well uh, lem go clock in, and we'll get going. Here, take this stuff around back to our truck, and I'll meet you out there. I walked out, found our truck, and did some more waiting. Eventually, the guy comes back out with a bag full of stuff, and sets it behind the seat. The guy finally introduces himself as Mark. He explained the finer points of the job. We go around to places like malls and grocery stores, use the sweeper truck to suck up the trash, use leaf blowers to blow trash away form the sidewalk, and empty all of the trash cans. Wow, that wasn't in the job description. Haha, <laughs> it never is. Don't worry, FNGs get the hang of the job easily. FNG? That's you, buddy. Mark and I got to know each other en route to the first place we had to clean. He's one of the coolest guys I've ever met and continues to be a friend to this day. He's got a really dry sense of humor, he's kind of a, and had been doing the job way too long. I got the hang of it midway through the night. It wasn't hard at all, just mind-numbingly dull manual labor. Happy to have someone to talk to, Mark kept me entertained the entire night with stuff he had seen out there. He also let me in on the fact that the sweeper vac guys are pretty tight-knit just for how shitty a job it was and that leaving the FNG in the break room is kind of a hazing. After a quick coffee break, we pulled up to one of our last stops for the night. It was a Walgreens dead in the center of the Nashville ghetto. Mark dropped me off in front of the building. All right, buddy, I'm going to run across the street to our last stop of the night. Go ahead and change the trash cans and check the back of the store for anything out of the ordinary. I'll pick you up when you're done, and we'll call it a night you're leaving me. Don't worry, call on the radio if you need anything. And just like that, my pasty white ass was in the middle of the ghetto at 3 a.m. on a Friday night. But, luckily for me, I grew up in D.C. and had learned some street sense. I changed the cans really quickly and went around back to look for anything out of the ordinary. Usually, I'm really good about watching my back. Notice I said usually. I was noting that the lights had been shot out when I heard something behind me. I whirled around to see a crackhead standing a few feet from me. Hey man. Hey. Uh, do you have a light, man? Sorry, I don't smoke, hey. Uh, do you got a dollar, man? Listen man, I'm covered to my head and stink at 3 a.m. on a Friday night. Does it look like I have a dollar? The guy then pulls a knife from his jacket pocket. This is not going to happen. I'm covered head to toe in grime, I'm exhausted, and now a crackhead is trying to mug me on my first night at work. This is not going to happen. So I did the only thing I could do. Come on, man. Give me that wallet. I hold up my hands, nod, and make like I'm reaching behind me for my wallet. Well, some acid had missed a dumpster with a pallet earlier in the day and had left planks of wood scattered about behind me. I grab a plank of wood, whip around, and crack it as hard as I can on the side of his face. He drops like a ton of bricks and I reached for the radio. Hey. Some crackhead just tried to mug me back here. I think I knocked him out. Do we need to call Metro PD or something? Long pause hello, is he dead? What? Is. He dead. 
I reached down and felt a strong pulse on the guy, but man was his face a wreck. No, he's alive. Fuck it, I'm coming to pick you up, see you in a sec. A moment later, Mark comes roaring behind the store, stops, and looks at my handiwork. Good form. Can we go now? I mean, I've had to drop guys before, but this takes the cake. Can we please go now? Mark then takes a picture with his cell phone. I can't wait to show the guys when we get back to the office. Later on that morning, he introduced me to everyone in the group. After showing off the pictures and bragging about how his FNG dropped someone the first night one of the other guys, Jay, got me a cup of coffee. It was then that I found out that almost getting robbed was a part of the job and I handled it like it was supposed to be handled. I also found out that FNG stood for fucking new guy. Edit, I'm now back in school. The Beastmaster it was my third night on the job and I was still training in Nashville. I had gotten the job down pretty well, and my nights were filled with talking to Mark. You see, out there at night, you start to go a little dot Mark, and I had been talking about the strange shit he's seen out here, and doing a damn fine job of creeping me the hell out. He had just finished trapping up a story about being jazzed by. Well, something when he was out here one night. Oh come on, you can't tell me that you were actually jazzed by an animal. Buddy, I'm telling ya. There was something out there chasing me. Something big wanted me, breathing down my neck. I think it smelled fear. You're telling me a bear chased you? Buddy, I don't know. I'm just telling you there's stuff out here that we don't know about. You're crazy maybe, maybe not, buddy. So we pull onto a lot deep in the quiet suburbs of Nashville. We hop out and do our thing. Mark's in the front of the lot and I'm behind it checking things out. I paused to light a smoke and thought about what Mark had said. Scratch scratch what the fuck was that? I chalked it up to being the wind and went back to my smoke. Scratch bang. Something fell down inside the area where they keep the dumpsters. I reached for the flashlight in my pocket and swept the beam around the area. As luck would have it, I didn't see a damn thing. Hello? Keep in mind that I was only into day three of training. The robber and subsequent ruck fires are still a few months off. I was still pretty green. Scratch boom. Bang. Oh shit oh shit oh shit. This can't be happening. My first thought is that it was Mark just fucking with me. Mark, I'm not a moron. I know it's you back there. Boom. Boom. Fuck this. I'm a 20 year old college student who did some growing up in the district of fucking Columbia. My first night I put the hurt on a fool who was trying to mug me. I'm 6'3", 250 pounds, and meaner than shit. I can take down, beat up, or kill whatever the fuck is behind that wall. After my little pep talk, I took long, powerful strides to the gate that led into the dumpster area. I threw open the gate and hit everything with the flashlight. Not a damn thing there. Something ain't right about this. Not right at all. I made the mistake of going to investigate further. I walked entirely into the gated area when a gust of wind blew the gate shut behind me. I heard something. Scratch scratch I clicked off the flashlight and listened. Yeah, there was something in here. My mind immediately conjured up thoughts of a giant bloodthirsty beast. It sounded like there was something in the dumpster. I made a move to flip it open when whatever was inside beat me to it. The dumpster lid flew open and the biggest goddamn raccoon I've ever seen jumped at me. This thing was the size of a dog and was none too happy that I had disturbed his dinner. I screamed like a girl. A -a 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 -a. Holy fucking shit. I ripped the gate open and ran full steam away from the dumpster. The damn thing was following me. I ran all the way around the building when Mark came to my rescue. Like a Roman centurion. He took a swing at the beast with a shovel. Get back, Fred. Leave the boy alone. The raccoon stops dead in its furry little tracks. Yeah, this is Fred. We found out he's a she after we named her. You walked right into her nest. Good job screaming at a raccoon, you've got some fast on you too, buddy. Didn't think you could move that quick. Rightly embarrassed, I started packing the truck up. The raccoon just stared at me like the rest of the time I was there. 
Fred and I would develop a relationship and I would use her later on in my stay with the company. But that's a story called Bruiser Trains and FNG. Here by request, messing with Ricers. It's like the Fast and the Furious. But with even worse cars and zit-faced high school kids. So, I pull into Dover Crossing, see. Shitty Kroger shopping center, and cruise around to get a general idea of how much trash is on the parking lot. Well, right in the center of the lot there are around 30 high school-aged kids, showing off their cheap, poorly modded, late 90s import cars. I could have handled that alone, but the cars we're parked the exact opposite from the parking spaces. I guess spending mommy's money on a body kit from eBay that you managed to crack two days after purchase gives you the right to do that. There are a couple of problems here. 1. The children are hanging out right in the middle of the lot. Over trash. That I need to pick up. Now. 2. I have a deep hatred for idiot 17-year-olds, shitty riced-out Honda Civics, and the anorexic trailer trash that passes for female companionship in that neck of the woods. A trifecta of Doom United. This could get interesting. So I park the truck at the end of the lot, blow out the curb line, and proceed to pick up every bit of trash around the mentally challenged driver's club meeting. I made a few close passes, hoping that they would get some assemblage of a clue and move. I then shunned myself for applying an ounce of logic when dealing with retards. So I cruise around for around 5 minutes and they still don't move. I shut down the rear engine and go over to the group of kids, I quickly find the leader and have a conversation with him. It went something like this, hey man, I was wondering if you guys could move a couple of spaces over so I can sweep here. You don't have to move your car or anything, I just need to get into this aisle for about 3 minutes. Moron, fuck you. Hey man, we don't need any of that. I just need to move in here for a few minutes. I'll be out of your hair in no time, really. Moron. Why don't you get back into your truck and get the fuck out of here. Now. The group of kids had gathered around and had actually started laughing at that last comment. So, it's like that? Moron? Yeah, it's like that. All right, man, just remember that I asked nicely first. Moron. Fuck off, garbage man. You know, something I've never understood is why people have to mess with me. First of all, I'm as big as a tank and I know how to fight. Second of all, I'm a nice guy. Until you piss me off. So the children taunt me as I go back to my truck. Oh, damn. I forgot to mention that I picked up a bag of quick creed at Home Depot. My previous stop that evening. You see, it was a full bag that had split open, so I had just put it in the back of my hopper, the hopper is where all of the trash goes. Oops. I wonder what would happen if I ran the blower engine, that's the engine that creates suction, at 100% throttle with all of that powdered quick creed in the back. Might as well find out, right? I dropped the hammer on the throttle control. My blower engine was screaming at full throttle, exhaust shooting out of the pipes. I had never run it at full power, because usually 30 to 50% is more than enough to pick up garbage. Plus, I didn't need any more exploding sweeper trucks. The entire truck was shuddering. There was so much pressure in the hopper, the quick creek couldn't find a way to escape. So I made one. I made one final run at the children. I was going about 25 miles an hour when I hit the controls to separate the hopper from the truck. What ensued was something for the ages. Quick creed and dust came billowing out of the two gigantic intake tubes. It seriously looked like a scene from Maximum Overdrive. The sound was horrendous as I made three loops around the children and their cars. A thick cloud of dust enveloped the parking lot as I did my laps like some kind of demon. The kids literally sprinted to their cars which were now covered with a super fine layer of white powder. I had never seen a parking lot clear out in under 15 seconds. I shut my engine down, reconnected the hopper to the intake tubes, and moved to the dust storm free front of the Kroger. Unbeknownst to me, I had drawn a crowd of the late night stalking crew who had seen me talking to the teens on camera and wanted to watch the action. I hopped out of the truck and lit a cigarette. All of the stocking crew was amazed and said that was fucking awesome and that I showed those assholes. We chatted for a few minutes as the dust cloud settled. 
it was time to move on to my next stop. Oh, there's one more thing. A rainstorm had moved through about 10 minutes before I showed up. Their cars were wet when I crop dusted. Hope they had fun getting that shit off. Dead rising. It was one of those creepy as fuck nights. The weather was in that in-between low 60s stage with a breeze. Too chilly at night for short sleeves, too warm for a jacket, and the moon was out full bore. I pulled up to my second stop of the night, a Home Depot. The moon was casting jagged, spearing shadows across the parking lot. I was using the blowers to clear out an island when I ducked around a row of sheds to relieve myself. Down at the end of a row was a red pickup truck. This by itself was not odd, usually an employee that left with a friend, maybe a couple, you know what I mean? Well, I eventually made it back to the truck and started sweeping the lot. I thought about that ruck and took a swing by it, hoping I could scare the shit out of some high school couple doing the tube snake boogie. I made one pass around the back and something just didn't jibe. 